Good morning. Thank you for welcoming me here today. Merci. Miigwech. Gela Kasla. Masicho. Kenenas Kuntin. Wellalan. And I could keep going, but there's 60 of them, and we only have 20 minutes. So. <laughs> Before I begin this morning, I'd like to recognize the Algonquin Nation, on whose traditional territory we are gathering. We acknowledge them as the past, present, and future caretakers of this land. Elders, youth, National Chief Belgard, members of the AFN Executive and Chiefs in Assembly, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you today. When I last joined you in July of this year, I said that I hoped you'd invite me back, whatever my job description might be. I'm so glad you took me up on that offer. As you know, just a few things have changed since we last met, but there are many things that endure. Meeting with Canadians, hearing your stories, and through those conversations, getting a better sense of what it is that people are going through. You can't be an effective member of Parliament if you're not doing those things each and every day, and that's no less true when you're the Prime Minister. La différence, c'est que mon gouvernement est maintenant en mesure de transformer cette compréhension en action. En d'autres mots, nous sommes à présent en mesure de réaliser le vrai changement, comme nous l'avons souligné dans le discours du trône la semaine dernière. Pour effectuer ce vrai changement, nous devons faire entendre la voix des peuples autochtones à Ottawa. Pour commencer, nous le ferons avec nos nouveaux députés. Sur la douzaine de candidats autochtones libéraux de la dernière campagne, huit ont été élus, et parmi ces huit, deux, Hunter Tutu du Nunavut et Jody Wilson-Raybould de Vancouver, sont maintenant ministres. Ils sont accompagnés au cabinet par une ministre des Affaires autochtones et du Nord, expérimentée et capable, Carolyn Bennett. Ce rôle, Ce rôle est nouveau pour Carolyn, mais elle a déjà été porte-parole libérale pour les Affaires autochtones, et comme vous savez très bien, elle connaît énormément bien les dossiers qui sont importants pour vos membres. But you've heard me say it before. It's not just about individual people or even individual governments. What's needed is nothing less than a total renewal of the relationship between Canada and First Nations peoples. During the election, in the months before and in the days since, I've made a personal commitment to bring new leadership and a new tone to Ottawa. I promise Canadians real change. That includes not just doing different things, but doing things differently, including the way that we, as a government, approach our relationship with others. History has shown, as the Elder highlighted, that taking an adversarial approach is not only ineffective, it can be profoundly damaging. Nowhere is this more obvious than in the government's relationship with First Nations. It is time for a renewed nation-to-nation -nation relationship with First Nations peoples. One that understands that the constitutionally guaranteed rights of First Nations in Canada are not an inconvenience, but a sacred obligation. One that is based on recognition of rights, respect, cooperation, and partnership. One that is guided by the spirit and intent of the original treaty relationship. One that respects inherent rights, treaties, and jurisdictions, and one that respects the decisions of our courts. I know that renewing our relationship is an ambitious goal 
but I am equally certain that it is one that we can and will achieve if we work together. This is a responsibility that I take seriously, and I have instructed my entire government to do the same. In the mandate letters given to my government ministers, my expectations were clear. I told them that no relationship is more important to me and to Canada than the one with First Nations, Métis Nation, and Inuit peoples. Aujourd'hui, aujourd je vous promets que cette relation sera transformée et respectée. Nous allons travailler avec vous pour rebâtir la confiance entre le gouvernement canadien et les peuples autochtones. Nous dirons la vérité. Si nous faisons des erreurs, comme en font tous les gouvernements, nous les reconnaîtrons et nous en tirerons des leçons importantes. Nous allons travailler ensemble en considérant les Premières Nations comme des partenaires à part entière tout en nous inspirant des valeurs de respect mutuel, de partage et de bienveillance. À cette fin, j'ai donné à la nouvelle ministre des Affaires autochtones et du Nord des instructions explicites sur la manière d'aller de l'avant. Among Carolyn's top priorities will be the creation of a national public inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls in Canada. And I'm already pleased to announce that progress has become, and an update on our progress will be provided to you by Ministers Bennett, Wilson Raybolt, and Minister Patty Haidu, Minister of Status and Women from Thunder Bay, this afternoon. We have made this inquiry a priority for our government because those touched by this national tragedy have waited long enough. The victims deserve justice their families an opportunity to heal and to be heard. We must work together to put an end to this ongoing tragedy. A second priority will be to make significant investments in First Nations education. This is one funding area where we know we can't afford to wait and we won't. Every child and young person living in Canada deserves a real and fair chance at success. First Nations students are no less deserving. At the same time, we will never impose solutions from the top down. We know that this approach is wrong, and we know it doesn't work. While we share a commitment to improving education outcomes, we believe that education reforms that affect First Nations children must be led by First Nations. Third, as National Chief Belgard alluded to, our government will immediately, as part of our first budget, lift the 2% cap on funding for First Nations programs. As you know, that limit has been in place for nearly 20 years. It hasn't kept up with the demographic realities of your communities, nor the actual costs of program delivery. It's time for a new fiscal relationship with First Nations that gives your communities sufficient, predictable, and sustained funding. This is a promise we made and a promise we will keep. Fourth, in partnership with Indigenous communities, the provinces, territories, and other vital partners, 
We will fully implement the calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, starting with the implementation of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And fifth, we will conduct a full review of the legislation unilaterally imposed on Indigenous peoples by the previous government. Where measures are found to be in conflict with your rights, where they are inconsistent with the principles of good governance, or where they simply make no public policy sense we will rescind them. And I, know, and I know just the Minister of Justice to keep an eye on that. <laughs> These are just five of the commitments we've made as part of our efforts to repair this most important relationship. There are many other actions we will undertake from partnering with First Nations as we review and monitor major resource development projects, to providing significant new funding to help promote, preserve, and protect Indigenous languages and cultures, to working together on essential infrastructure projects uh, from water to roads. But, in every instance, we cannot do this alone. We need your help and leadership, too. We cannot close the gaps between the First Nations experience and those of others without a collective, collaborative, nation-to-nation -nation approach like the one that resulted in the Kelowna Accord. As leaders, that is a responsibility we share. Hein? Je suis convaincu qu'en étant des partenaires, nous pouvons faire des progrès significatifs et immédiats dans les dossiers qui comptent le plus pour le, vos communautés, comme l'éducation, le logement, l'emploi, les soins de santé et de santé mentale, la sécurité des communautés, l'aide sociale à l'enfance et la protection de nos terres, de nos eaux et de l'air. Il serait tout simplement inacceptable d'en faire moins. We have much work ahead of us, some we will be able to tackle right now, some, no matter how hard we work, is going to be uh, for future leaders uh, to build on the groundwork that we lay. But we know we walk forward together in the right direction. Toutes nos communautés et tous nos enfants méritent un avenir meilleur, celui que nous pouvons leur offrir en travaillant tous ensemble. As I said when we last met, a respectful, cooperative partnership is not only possible, it is a sacred responsibility inherited from past generations and entrusted to us by future ones. I promise you that I will be your partner in the years to come and hope that you will be mine. We have much work to do together. Merci.